popular licensing exam for international medical graduates has always been USMLE, then PLAB. Now there's a new contender called AMC with over 6,000 IMGs is starting their career in Australia in 2023. So in this video, I'm going to compare AMC with USMLE exam. After living in Australia for 17 years and talking to my very close doctor friends in the US, I found many similarities and some key differences in work and life in two very similar Western countries from weather, culture and language point of view, but huge differences from working conditions, salary and other important aspects. But what I want you to think is on the basis of timeline. For example, AMC might be better in short term gain as it's easier and simpler. USMLE might be superior as median term for most residency options and long term high earning potential of US consultants or attending. But what about very long term prospects of working as a consultant in Australia versus that in the US? Think about in terms of the private versus public health system, working hours, security, and above all, burnout rates. I think this video will generate fair discussion points. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. For the purpose of ease, I'll divide this video into real cost of exams, availability and venue exams, exam content preparation and pass rates, jobs and training opportunities, visa, permanent residency and citizenship, financials, working condition, country location, traveling and holidays, security and my conclusion based on all of these advice before i proceed further if you really like the content or if you're the first time visiting into this channel please do like comment and subscribe this really helped the youtube algorithm and put a bit of appreciation of the work that i'm doing so thank you very much for that real cost of amc versus usmle i'm going to talk predominantly about what is the least cost or least expense to be work ready first let's talk about amc for AMC, you will build an AMC portfolio for $642, get an EPIC verification, which is about $230 US dollars or Australian $360 for both identification and primary medical qualification checks. AMC one cost as of 2024 will be $3,124 and AMC clinical will set you back $4,391. You will also have to take an OET or an English exam, which is about Australian $587. So overall cost is about $9,104 Australian dollars. But important thing is that you can apply for jobs straight after AMC one and more than 70% of international medical graduate got their first job straight after AMC and you don't have to do AMC clinical straight away. So overall fee then reduces to Australian $4,713, which is about US $3,000. All applications are online and most interviews are conducted via Zoom if you're overseas, so the cost is zero. You apply for APRA limited registration after passing AMC one, which is 1,020 Australian dollars, or you apply for APRA provisional registration if you've passed both AMC one and AMC two, which is about 698 Australian dollars. So final cost of AMC to be work ready is $5,733 or US $3,653 if you've only passed AMC one and $10,124, which is US $6,451 if you have passed AMC two as well. Now let's talk USMLE. Application for ECFMG certification, 160 US dollar. A step one cost plus surcharge free if you're an IMG sitting from outside the US is 1,155 US dollar. A step two cost plus surcharge free is $1,175. I have not included step three as it's not mandatory, but it does help increase the chances of getting a match, especially as an IMG. The price is US dollars 895. OET exam is about 500 US dollars. Application for the pathway to ECFMG certification is $925. USMLE transcript fee when you are applying for jobs is $80. I'm not including the elective fee at this stage, which are considered important to get a letter of recommendation, but the fee for three electives could be as high as US dollars 4,500. Now ERAS token, when are you applying for jobs is $165. ECFMG certification is US $160. CVS verification $66. ERAS program application applying for on an average between 130 to 150 internal medicine programs is about $3,579, which is quite interesting that in order to apply for a match in internal medicine, you have to actually pay for that. So it's not free to apply for a job. There's a cost associated with that. And it is said that a typical 
IMG would apply about 130 to 150 internal medicine program to get matched or shortlisted for a program. So the total cost, US dollars, 7,965. But almost all IMGs, as I said, must do electives to get matched. So if you include three medical electives, plus living and travel expenses, then the cost would be something like US dollars, $4,500 for three medical electives, plus another $11,000 for visa, air tickets, three month accommodation, three month food, traveling, health insurance, professional liability insurance, making the grand total to be job ready for US MLE, 23,465. So AMC route to be ready to work with AMC one only, the cost is 3,635 US dollar or 6,451 with AMC clinical. But similarly, if we are doing clinical observation in Australia, it may add another six to 7,000 US dollars on top of making a grand total of US dollar for AMC one of 9,635 and US 12,451 with AMC two in a pocket as well. So overall, it appears the price of AMC route is going to be half the price of US MLE. But factually, 70% of IMGs who get their first job in Australia have not even set foot in Australia and can do AMC 1 and now AMC 2 online and even apply for jobs free of cost online from their home country of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh or any country in the world whilst maintaining their work in their home countries. So this is a big plus in terms of convenience, saving money. So I think AMC is a clear winner here from the cost and ease point of view. Availability and venue. Both AMC 1 and USMLE 1 and 2 can be done online. AMC 1 is done via Pearson View centers and you can Google Pearson view and find out the dates and location and USMLE step one and two is done via the Prometric throughout the world. Most dates for AMC are available within four to five months. Our AMC clinical may have a wait time of six to eight months. AMC clinical exam can be done online from your own home with high speed internet or via Zoom. So in conclusion, I think USMLE is superior due to multiple location, wide availability of dates, exam content, preparation, and pass rate. Now AMC MCQ consists of 150 MCQs over three and a half hours. It consists of multiple choice questions covering a wide range of medical knowledge based on the final year clinical subject of medicine, surgery, obstetrics, gynae, pediatrics, focusing mainly on disease process, clinical examination, diagnosis, investigation, therapy, and management. Average time to prepare is about four to five months. On regular basis, about five hours of study per day. The resources to study include John Murtha, General Practice Textbooks, plus Anthology of Medical Condition, plus AMC MCQ Handbook, plus online AMC MCQ resources, which includes number of QBanks. Online resources include you know, therapeutic guidelines, up to date, life in the fast lane, med bullets, MBOS, MEDEX, M plus X, but if you're overwhelmed with all of this information, you can come and join our Emergency Focus AMC One course where all of these resources would be made available to you with live sessions and all of the notes and guidelines available through the portal. AMC Clinical is based on OSCE stations with 10 as minimum passing station. These are mostly based on same subjects as medicine, surgery, ops and gynae, pediatrics, physical exam, mental health, and you know, taking history, examination, diagnosis, and management plans with communication as a central component. USMLE step one is predominantly basic sciences, you know, like anatomy, embryology, physiology, pathology, pharmacology, biochemistry, and nutrition, histology, and cell biology, and genetics covered within the domains of medical knowledge, diagnostic management, communication, and professionalism. The entire USMLE step one is an eight hour exam, which is done in seven blocks of 60 minutes each with 1.5 minutes per question. Reading resources include first aid for USMLE step one, plus preclinical medicine, plus sketchy videos, plus UWorld, plus MBOSS, plus Pathoma, plus USMLE RX, USMLE step one Q book. USMLE step two comprise of clinical knowledge component only. The clinical knowledge exam is a computer-based multiple choice question exam. It covers clinical sciences like internal medicine, surgery, pediatrics, ops and gynae, psychiatry, preventative medicine, and other areas relevant to the health and disease that physicians might encounter in general undifferentiated settings. So it's very similar to AMC MCQ in many ways. The duration, the exam typically takes one whole day with a, with a total of nine hours, including break time. It does consist of about 318 questions divided into 
eight 60 minute blocks. Exam is scored on pass fail plus an overall numerical score. So books for USMLE step two, first aid for USMLE step two CK, uh, step up to USMLE step two CK, master the board is USMLE step two CK, Q banks or question banks U world, arguably the most essential resource, Kaplan's Q back and MBOS, I think it's pretty much mandatory what I've heard from most people taking USMLE. Practice exams, NBME clinical science self-assessment, online video resources, online med ED, board and beyond known for its comprehensive video series originally step one but now it's for step two, flashcards and Enki decks. I believe in terms of ease of study AMC one is far far easier shorter than step one and step two CK. Also I think AMC clinical is simple exam especially if you are currently working in a hospital setting with direct patient interaction. From 2024 all dates for AMC clinical exams are going to be online meaning you can attempt the exams from anywhere in the world. Now USMLE has huge following top graduates from all over the world attempting it with excellent success rate. However, AMC1 and AMC2 historically has been taken by doctors with large practice gap. But in my personal experience, fresh graduates, you know, one or two years out of med school, attempting AMC1 and AMC2 have very good pass rates, job and training opportunities. The training systems in Australia is more like that of a UK. However, in Australia, doctors can get into the system through multiple pathways as junior doctors via AMC exams, also as specialists through a specialist pathway and GPs have their own pathways like competent authority pathway or GP specialist pathways. There's no restriction for entry into the system. Most IMGs after coming to Australia have completed their internship back home for at least one to two years of RMO or are currently working as an RMO and they are the ones who have got specially high chance of tapping into the big pool of RMO recruitment campaigns. After AMC1, jobs are individually applied through state websites and general recruitment, which is also known as annual medical recruitment campaign, which starts in June every year for clinical year starting in January the following year. However, throughout the year, individual jobs or non-training jobs are also advertised, which might be more feasible for the doctors who are a little bit more senior or even junior doctors because these jobs are available because of, uh, you know, covering some sick leave or annual leave or if somebody has resigned for some personal reason. The process is actually free and simple with job application, CVs and interview to finally leading a job offer. There's no centralized matching system as doctors are taken into pre-vocational training initially, which is RMO year. So you're not actually started training. It's actually an RMO training, which is a general training. After completed two to three years as an RMO, doctors can then apply for a training position in surgical, medicine, critical care, emergency, ops and gynae, radiology, psychiatry, which is governed by the specialist college, which is through an open competition with most IMGs choosing fields like general practice, acute medicine, emergency medicine, ICU, anesthesia, ops and gynae, psychiatry and pediatrics. However, more competitive fields like surgery, radiology, do take a significant effort to get in. Now, people often ask me what are my chances of getting into the surgery and I will maintain a blanket statement. Top 10% of all IMGs who are committed, they've done research, they've got credibility and good credentials with, you know, jobs done in surgery through their RMO years, with research, with good references, there are excellent chances of getting into surgical field. It's an open competition top 10% of you will gain an entrance into most competitive specialty like neurosurgery, orthopedic, vascular surgery, pediatric surgery, and so forth. Generally, all training jobs require doctors to have full or general registration, meaning pass in AMC clinical or completed WBA programs. Let's talk about the US. In the US, the training actually starts from the beginning through centralized matching system called National Resident Matching Program or NRMP. Based on your credentials, the clinical experience and publications, doctors may match into internal medicine, surgery, psychiatry, radiology, emergency, and depending on the specialty, the residency program may range between three years to all the way up to seven years. Some doctors may also do further one to three years of fellowship in specialties like cardiology, oncology, and some physicians may choose to become board certified by passing specialty specific exams like cardiology, emergency medicine. The overall structure of training is excellent with seamless integration from residency to fellowship to board certification, provided you are hardworking and able to pass the exams and get excellent references on the way. Here, certainly US medical system is far superior to any other system in the world. However, only 
54 to 57 percent of the IMGs match into residency training programs and their matching varies from year to year and depends on several factors including you know applicants USMLE scores the clinical experience letter of recommendations and the medical specialty that they're applying to my conclusion despite 50 percent of IMGs not been able to match in the US training system it is actually better than the Australian medical training system because once you're in the system your transition to the higher grade as a consultant attending are much more better compared to any other system in the world. Visa and permanent residency and citizenship. In Australia, employer generally sponsor the first visa for your first job, which is also for a two visa for, for two years and it can be further extended for further two years or four years. But most doctors are able to apply for permanent residency within 24 months of arriving in Australia as soon as they pass their AMC clinical or get the full or general registration via the via WBA program and complete 12 months of supervised hospital work. The citizenship can then be applied within two to three years of permanent residency. So the overall process from visa to permanent residency and citizenship can be completed as minimum time to about four or five years. In US, most IMGs are given J1 or H1B visa. J1 visa for seven years for medical training. After completing their training, the J1 visa holders are generally required to return back to their home country for two years before they can apply for another non-migrant visa or permanent residency in the US. There are waivers available and it is possible to have that waiver of two year home residency requirement under certain circumstances such as obtaining a Conrad 30 waiver which involves working in medically underserved areas. H1B visa is specialty occupation visa. This is a visa for individuals who will perform services in specialty occupation like doctors are one of them and some of the programs do actually sponsor H1B visa. The requirements are applicants must have passed USMLE step 3 for most part and must be ECFMG certified. The residency program must also agree to sponsor the visa. The duration of this visa is up to three years and can be extended with maximum of six years. Unlike J-1 visa, H-1B visa does not have that mandatory home country physical presence requirement, making it a preferred option for those seeking to stay in the US after the residency. Now there are limitations of H-1B visa, which is that they are subject to caps and more challenging to obtain because they're more expensive for you know the employees to sponsor these kind of visa. Make sure that you choose the right visa or right program associated with the right visa when you're applying for a residency in the US. Permanent residency or green card in the US is a complex process and involves one of the following pathways. The entire process may take up to 10 years, I've heard. Employment-based green cards as EB1 or EB2 visa which is for advanced degree professionals. Conrad 30 waiver program. This is mostly for J1 visa holders who have completed their medical training. The IMGs must agree to work for at least three years in underserved areas. Benefit is that this program faces the two year home residency requirement of that of a J1 visa and then can lead to H1B visa subsequently to a green card application. Number three, marriage to a US citizen or lawful permanent residency. Number four, asylum or refugee status and self petition as a physician of national or regional interest specific to physician. Certain physician can self petition if they agree to work full time in clinical practice in designated underserved area for a set period of time. In conclusion, I think Australian system is a clear winner here for simplicity and ease of getting a permanent residency, finally leading to a citizenship. Financials. In Australia, for a typical 40-hour work week, salary of a resident is between 80000 to up to 110000 Australian dollars. Um, a registrar in training can earn between 120000 to $160,000. Consultants can start from $250,000 all the way up to $550,000 per annum. That's in a public health sector. The GPs can earn between $350,000 to $450,000 per annum. That's mostly private work. Now, if you add private work, doctors can easily double their income. In the US, the salary of medical resident and attending physicians vary significantly based on the factors such as specialty, geographical locations, and years of experience and the type of healthcare facility. Here's an overview. Medical residents to up to 70,000 US dollar per year. Attending physician salaries can be very variable. The attending salary may start from $200,000 to $250,000 per year. Now these are typically amongst the lower paid specialties. Cardiology may earn between 400,000 to up to 500,000 US dollars. Gastroenterologists can earn up to 370 to 490,000 US dollars. Oncologists up to 350 to up to 450,000 dollars. 
And you know, surgical specialties track more salary. So something like uh, general surgery, $360,000 to up to $420,000. Orthopedic surgery, which is one of the highest paid, can be up to $500,000 or half a million US dollars. Neurosurgery, again, a top paying specialties, can attract up to $800,000 to up to a million dollar or more. I think from a junior doctor point of view, Australian salaries are better for 40 hour work week. Also, consultant salaries are better for same reason. However, more you work, more you earn here in Australia. The quality of life in Australia is generally high with premium property prices in capital cities. And even established doctors find it very hard to afford big houses initially in their career in cities like Sydney's and nice suburbs of Melbourne. But after a few years, they are able to achieve significant financial growth from savings and higher income. Working conditions. The resident in the US typically work anything between 70 to 80 hours per week. I will not be wrong in saying that residents in training live in the hospital throughout their residency. For a consultant or specialist, the patient load is also very high in the US and the demands from the private work and hospital works because the hospital operates businesses there. More pressure on the doctors to deliver higher, better, smoother services that notoriously causes high burnout rates it's in specialties like emergency medicine, ICU, family medicine, in predominantly all surgical specialties. In Australia, hospital and primary care system do function well to a degree. The doctors are paid well for 40 hour work week in government sector or public sector, and they don't feel compelled to work privately. Many emergency doctors, medical specialists, and even surgeons work only in public hospital. That said, post COVID, there has been surge in patient numbers and acuity, especially in emergency medicine, family medicine, and physicians have faced very stressful working condition. However, most of these conditions are not as bad as US, UK, and other very busy countries of the world. Now, life in Australia is outdoors and weather stays mid 20s range and sunny for most of the years for most capital cities of Australia, which additionally provides some reprieve from working conditions. Country location, traveling and holidays. Both US and Australia are located at the opposite end of the world. Australia has seven major cities and much of the population is located in coastal towns. Life is laid back and traveling links are improving with the rest of the world and Southeast Asia especially. Locally, here are active migrant communities and major concerts and sporting events. Australians love their cricket, their rugby's, their soccer's, golf, tennis. These are the get-go sports with events throughout the year. I can compare life in Australia as one large theme park, which has many natural wonders and beautiful vibrant cities to offer. The popular tourist destination or holiday destination from Australia are New Zealand, Japan, Hawaii, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, South Korea, India, and Middle Eastern countries. There are almost daily flights to all the continents from Australia with major airlines operations. United States obviously has a large and diverse population and despite its far location, it's well connected to Europe, UK and pretty much all the regions in the world. It has 30 plus major cities like New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, Houston, Phoenix, Dallas, Washington, Miami. The cultural diversity is what in the US stands out. You can find large diaspora of pretty much all nationalities in the US, which has given rise to most culturally diverse societies on the planet. I think US definitely takes the cake here for being more vibrant, both due to its cultural diversity and its links to the rest of the world and many popular touristy destination within America. Security. Now comparing crime rates between United States and Australia involves looking at various factors, including types of crimes, rates per capita and overall trend. It's important to note that direct comparison can be challenging because you know it differs in legal conditions, reporting, standards and data collection methods. However, general overview is the US has historically high rates of violent crime, including homicides compared to that in Australia. Factors like gun ownership, socioeconomic disparities and urbanization play an important role, especially in the US. And also, you know, gun related crime, we always hear these news of uh, mass shootings in schools and in towns and in shops. These are pretty much unheard of in Australia because of strict gun control. In US, there are certain areas which are absolutely no go. In Australia, there is no such area as no go. You can pretty much go and travel at any time of the day without much fear. Obviously, you know, there are certain areas to avoid, but these are not the areas which are out of bond. My conclusion and advice based on all of these categories, for me, Australia is a place to be for young doctors, specialists and the GPs who can be at any stage of their career can still come here through the standard AMC pathway, through the GP pathways, through the specialist pathways. 
Typically, the junior doctors do come here after two to three years of post internship experience and passing AMC 1. Now, life is laid back in a country towns but vibrant cities with prospects of raising your family in a very safe and culturally harmonious environment. Australia does have high income and has overall a good work life balance. So, in terms of your work longevity, Australia is placed to be. Of course, there are compromises, but trust me, there are more individual than general. Now, if you like to start from the basics and don't mind working hard and then working even harder as you progress for excellent chance to grow and be financially better off, US is the place to be. Socially, it has large migrant communities, local holiday destination and good links to throughout the world. Also, you know, the life is much more vibrant in the US. I have friends in the US who have also limited their hours of work and also tend to enjoy good work-life balance. However, those tend to be very, very small number of people. Most of the people that I've come across in the US are actually caught in that rat race of having poor work-life balance and then erring on a side of burnout. Please let me know in comment section about your opinions and which country or license exam you are thinking of. Don't forget, we have the most popular AMC1 and AMC2 course that you can enroll to begin your journey here in Australia. Look after yourself and each other. Goodbye.